Hello everyone, today we're going to be uh, doing a, an overview of a bypass filter system I put on a 2021 Chevrolet Duramax and started this uh, bypass system on it about probably a year, year and a half ago. Uh, initially the truck had about 25,000 miles on it when we put the bypass system on. Um, it's a concrete contractor, uh, one of my customers, been one of my customers for quite a number of years. Um, I did his 2018, I uh, did a video of that one as well. Um, we're doing oil changes on this with the Amsoil 5W40 uh, Signature Series and uh, we've done about three oil changes. He's about ready for his fourth one now, but the three oil changes that we've done were right in that 18, 18 and a half thousand mile range. Okay, so we wanted to be able to do the extended drains and uh, with the filters that they have on the, the newer Duramax in 2020, they went with a larger oil cooler and then they did the dumbest thing by putting on a smaller filter. This is the original filter from about 2001 through 2019, the Amsoil filter. You can see it's a fair size filter. And uh, the new filter size uh, that Amsoil has for that is this right here. Okay, this is for the 2020 nups and EAO 11. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut that apart. Um, what we're gonna do is compare. I got three oil changes here three sets of filters that we took off. I, I held them back so that they didn't get destroyed and I want to cut them apart just to, to show you how the PPE filters are put together and uh, also what's in these uh, these bypass filters just to give you uh, peace of mind and then also I'm going to include the uh, the oil analysis as well. I'm going to do a screenshot of the oil analysis and kind of show you how that's performing as well. So the first thing we're going to do I'm going to cut apart that small filter here um, this filter really only has maybe about two inches worth of filter media around it. It's not a lot. And this is one I took off of actually, a, it was a Ford engine. Ford uses that same filter. And uh, I'm gonna cut that apart. Um, this filter the cutter that I have, I've had it for about 30 years. And right here is the part number on it. It's a 4C5084 Caterpillar. I don't know if they still make it or not, but uh, it's been a very good filter cutter for me. And it'll do the big filters as well as the small ones. So it's got a little cutter head in and rollers, and I'll show you how that works. <clears throat> it can be kind of messy, so you may want to put some rags in your vise uh, when you go to cut it. It just depends how much is drained out of the filter while it was draining. Basically, it's just like cutting a pipe, like a copper pipe. This one's going to be a little dirty. I can see that already. And I got cardboard down on the floor, so I ain't too worried about that. But okay, here we got the top cut off. Now I'm going to set that aside. pull out this filter so you got some idea how much media there is. Like I said, I don't think we have quite two inches. It's pretty close. But uh, this filter here on the Duramax, I don't know if I'd run that for more than probably about 10,000 miles. Um, you can kind of see there's not a lot of filter media there. So what I put on instead of this filter is the, uh, the PPE filter. It's a lot longer. Uh, a lot more uh, filter media and we're going to start cutting those apart here next. See if I can keep that oil there from spilling too much. <clears throat> okay. The other thing about this filter is it has a magnet down here in the base. So I can set that on top there. It's, it's a fairly strong magnet. I want to see what that looks like too. I've never cut one of these PPEs apart. Um, the only thing that I <clears throat> that I wonder about the PPE is the actual efficiency. I know what the efficiency of the Amsoil filters are. They're right at 99% efficient at 20 microns. I'm not exactly sure the percentage of efficiency on this PPE filter. <clears throat> okay, so we got a silicone anti-drain back valve. And there's the filter. So, trying to show you why I go to the longer PPE filter. It's just a whole lot more filter media there. 
and uh, there's also a lot more filter media in this filter than you'll have in the original GM filter on the 2020 Duramaxes as well. Okay, quite a difference there. So I'm going to cut that one apart and try and see if I can get that magnet out. I don't know if it's stuck to the bottom. Glued in? No, it's not glued in. Okay. No, nope, still in there. Come on. Strong one. I think it's a neodymium magnet. It's a strong one. Okay, so <clears throat> as we look at that magnet, I believe this is the first filter that we put on it about 25,000 miles. And I've really got very little, if anything, on it. There's not a whole lot on it, as you can see. Just oil. No fuzz. That's a good sign. That's always a good sign with the engine. But that's the magnet that goes on it. And like I said, it's, it's a fairly strong magnet too. Which is a good idea inside the filter. Okay. So that's the first one. Cut apart. And set that here. And uh, <clears throat> let's go ahead and get the second one. See what it looks like. I just want to do an overview of each one just to see what's in them. Because again, we're running 18,000 mile drain intervals. Now as you look at this oil on the filter and filter head here, it looks black. And I had a guy send me a video from YouTube of a fellow who would put an Amsoil bypass filter system on his truck, diesel pickup. This has been about a year ago. And uh, he's saying that you shouldn't use bother putting on the bypass filter system from Amsoil because it doesn't stop the, uh, doesn't clean the oil. Okay, he had no oil analysis to see what the level of soot was at. Um, he was just going by the color of the oil. So if you look at the oil, yeah, it's black at 18,000 miles, okay? Now, I can't tell by, by doing this how much soot is in it, okay? The oil analysis can do that. So the oil analysis is not going to flag the soot until we reach about 3%, okay? And I believe on these here, the soot level is a half a percent or less at 18,000 miles. I got to look at the oil analysis. I don't have it right in front of me. But uh, my point is this. <clears throat> the uh, soot in your engine, it goes in, it's very small. It starts out at about a fourth to a half of a micron. And quite a bit of it is blow by by the rings because the rings don't seal 100%. Okay? So what that oil does, or that soot does, it accumulates in the oil. And it does what's called agglomeration. It's a fancy word for saying that it sticks to itself. So that soot will start growing in size from a fourth of a micron to a half micron to one micron, okay? Once it reaches two microns, now it becomes a wear particle because the most damaging dirt to your engine is between two and 20 microns. And that dirt is responsible for 80 to 90% of the abnormal wear over the life of the engine. And that's the dirt that acts like liquid sandpaper. It just slowly wears away at your bearings and journals. And when you're looking at the oil analysis, that's really what you're looking at is that real fine wear caused by that dirt between 2 and 20 microns. Okay, your full flow filter, again, these are about 90, 99% efficient at 20 microns. They can't make this filter media any tighter. If they do, you won't get the flow or the bypass will open up and you'll just get dirty oil going into your engine. Okay, so it does a great job of stopping the catastrophic dirt that's going to destroy your engine. What it can't do is it can't stop that real fine dirt that causes and accumulates at 80 to 90% of the abnormal wear over the life of the engine, okay? So that's where the bypass filter comes in at because the bypass filter is right at 99% efficient at two microns, okay? So getting back to this, uh, the story about the black oil and the, the YouTube video, um, basically what we're looking at there is he had no oil analysis to, to verify where he was at. Now this, this may be right here, that may be a half of a percent of soot. I don't know without looking at the oil analysis again. We'll do that as I go through that here later. But the soot that's in here, 
I know is below two microns. And the reason I know that is because it's been through the bypass filter so many times. So if it's below two microns, it's really of no concern to me as far as wear, because it's not big enough to be a wear particle. Okay, all it's doing is making the oil dark. But you can see this oil is not a thick, muddy black like you would see if it's got way too much soot in it. Okay, so that's my answer to the guys who sent me that YouTube video and all, you've, all of you out there is the oil is going to darken even with the bypass system. The key to it is, is how much soot do we have accumulated? Okay, that's, that's in the oil analysis and the only way you can find that out is to send in an oil analysis. So that's, that's my, my take on, on the soot and, and the blackness of the oil at 18 to 20,000. People say that's yeah, dirty oil. Well, according to what? Okay, if you got the oil analysis showing you how much soot is present, not a big deal. You know where you're at. You got it monitored, you know where you're at. Okay, so that's the second filter. I'm gonna pull out this magnet here. Okay, there's magnet number two, and again, basically all that's on there is oil. That's always a good sign. That means there's not much wear going on inside that engine. Okay, clean it off. Okay, magnet number two. I'm going to tear apart number three here. I believe this is the latest one that I changed oil on for. filter number three. And I'm going to pull that magnet out, see what it looks like. And there it is. And again, all we got on there is oil. I'm not seeing any fuzz. clean. So there's three, three filters, three oil changes at 18,000 miles each. So, you know, we're approaching right now, he's on his uh, fourth oil change since we switched over to the AMSOIL and the bypass system. So we're closing in on 100,000 miles on that truck right now. And everything's working very beautifully. Um, the other thing I do with these filters is I will cut out a part of the filter media and I'll squeeze it in the vise so I can see what's in it for wear particles or dirt or what have you. Okay, so what I'll do, some of these filters have, uh, they'll have a, uh, a screen backing in them. So it gets kind of hard to cut them and this one's no different. It's got a screen backing and it's a synthetic media filter. Okay, so we're gonna cut out just a section of it here with a Stanley knife. And I'm going to try and get this uh, covering off too so that doesn't get in my way. Not quite coming apart like I like it to, but. What I try to do is use a tin snips to go down and snip that screen backing. It seems to work a little better than just using a Stanley knife. Come on. It's a tough filter. There we go.
and slippery. Okay, so I've got a piece of that media, and uh, again, it's got a, a screen backing on it because the synthetic media, and that's what supports the uh, the filter media. Now I'm going to get a couple of extra towels in here. I'm going to put it in the vise, and I'm going to squeeze it just as tight as I can in that vise. And what that does will squeeze out the oil, any residual oil that's in there, so you can see what's in that media better. Otherwise, the oil kind of masks the dirt or masks the metal. But I just put it in there and just squeeze and squeeze and squeeze as tight as I can and soak out any oil. Now and I open it up and try and rip off this uh, stuff that's holding it together here if I can without losing too much of the media so you can still see what's in it. Tough stuff. It's making it hard to open this up like I want to. glue they put on the outside just it hangs on there tight. Okay so what I'm looking at mainly is on this outside here we're looking for, for sparklies, we're looking for dirt and again these are 18,000 miles on the filter and I'm, I'm not seeing anything. see on the surface there really isn't anything on it. I'm going to take this surface one off and see what's down deep in the pleats there. There's nothing there. It's clean. And that's the way we want to see them. So that gives me a lot of confidence in these filters. It looks like they're performing real well. And the oil analysis itself will kind of tell you that as well. I'm going to cut apart one of these bypass filters just to see what's in that. Give you some idea. And again, the bypass filters will run the same amount of time because when I change oil, I'm changing both the bypass and the full flow. I sample it before I change it. I get people to ask me about the dual bypass system for the 2020 and up Duramax. And Amsoil has not approved them for them. And I know that a standalone bypass is not going to cause me an issue with oil flow because we're only flowing about a gallon a minute. And that's why I went with a standalone bypass. I'm not a big corporation, so if I give advice out there that uh, doesn't work, that can get a guy in trouble. So here's the bypass filter. And this is a short one. I used the short one on these uh, diesels because I had a lot of them to use up. And uh, when we're only running 18, 20,000 miles, these are fine. Um, the next length filter is about an inch and a half longer. And then the next one after that is another inch and a half longer. That's the 110. So this is the BABP90. There's an EABP100 and an EABP110. Okay. So you can add more oil capacity with the bigger filter, but you're also spending more for the filter. And uh, the biggest thing stopping us from doing longer drain intervals right now is the uh, TBN or base number of the oil, and that's where the reserve alkalinity that neutralizes the acids. We're getting down to about uh, right around two, and it starts out at about 11 on this brand new oil. So what it's responsible for, it's a high pH additive, and as the acids form, it mixes with it to bring it up to a neutral state, so it can't do damage to the metals. But at the same time, that TBN is also sacrificial. So when we get down to two on the TBN in the oil, that's 18,000, 20,000 miles, 
you are going to get flagged on it by the oil sample uh, results because if you let it go to zero, you no longer have the ability to neutralize the acids any longer. So you just don't have enough reserve alkalinity to go that extra length. And that's due to the new formulation diesel oils. It backed out of some of the uh, additives that give you a higher base number. So, so that was starting in 2007 where they changed the oil formulation. get a nice chunk of it out. We're going to do the same thing to this one. We'll just squeeze it in the vise nice and tight. Soak that oil out. Clamp it as tight as you can. You know, get as much of that oil out as you can. And soak it out with the rag top and bottom so it don't suck back, soak back into the uh, filter media. up and take a look at it. This here is the dirty side right here. And again, there's no sparklies in it, there's no nothing. So it's capturing the soot, it's capturing that real fine dirt that you can't see. But limit of human vision is about 40 microns. Okay, so anything below 40 microns you'd have to have magnification to see it. This filter is right at 99% efficient at two microns. So this is catching the soot, this is catching the fine dirt that the full flow can't. So I'm really liking what I see here. Like I said, these are these filters are, all these are run right around 18,000 mile drain intervals. So I'm, I'm doing this video just as a, a way to show you how this is all performing and then also to uh, take a look also at the oil analysis to just to see how that's all performing. So. This kind of is it for the for the dirty end of it. The next end of it, we're going to uh, take a look at the at the oil analysis. So we'll be back with you on that. Okay, what I have here is the oil analysis. And there's actually uh, we got four of them here from the uh, 2021 Duramax. And the first one here was uh, let's go down here to the date. It was June of 22. And that was with the petroleum-based oil. That was when we switched it over to AMS oil. We had uh, 7,700 miles on the oil and 27,000 on the truck. So the filter was changed at that time. We have a little bit of fuel dilution there. And uh, it's not a lot. Uh, I've seen fuel dilution as high as 8 to 10%. And I've had a semi that was as high as, it was over 20%. And the oil was down to a five weight. That was AMS oil, uh, diesel oil. And uh, we had no engine issues whatsoever out of that one. 2.9% um, is it's getting there. It's it's a little bit, and uh, it didn't really affect any of the wear metals a whole lot. So uh, I'll give it the benefit of the doubt on that as far as how it was performing because it had some fuel dilution. Uh, the soot on it was uh, two tenths of one percent uh, at 7,000 miles. Uh, if we look over here, base number 6.3. The base number is the reserve alkalinity. That is what neutralizes acids in the oil. And on that petroleum base oil is in there, it probably started out at about uh, eight or maybe nine um, base number. And as it depletes, the number comes down. And once it gets down to two, they will flag it and say it's time to change it. 
because you no longer have the ability to neutralize acids once you get down to zero. Oxidation nitration, we're looking fine on that first sample. Um, how much, uh, taking a look at the viscosity, 12.6 on the viscosity. And that is right at the beginning of a, th of a 30 weight, 12.6. I think 12.5, it was 12.5, it would be the beginning of the 30 weight. And that was a 40 weight oil to start with. Uh, that petroleum base that was in there initially when we changed it. Now, we go down here to the AMS oil. The next sample we took was uh, September. We had uh, 18,000, almost 18,500 miles on the AMS oil with the bypass filtration. And uh, 45,000 on the truck. Uh, the oil's changed. Um, fuel dilution is pretty much uh, not there. Um, so it was a half of 1%. Now on the soot, they won't flag it until you reach 3%. And um, the soot is, is an abrasive. Um, and I've, again, we're at, what are we, 18,000, almost 18,500 miles, and we're at half of 1%. Uh, this here was at 7,000, and we had two-tenths of 1%. So not a lot of difference, a little bit. Um, Viscosity right there it is 14 uh, centistokes that's uh, about right in the middle of a of a 40 weight and we're running a DEO signature series 5W40 for all these other three oil samples here the last three and base number at that point was down to 3.5 and again that's at 18,000 some miles uh, we had a little bit of reserve alkalinity there yet um, oxidation nitration is very well kept in check and if you look at the wear metals. Um, you know, we're looking at the wear metal iron, and there's something I do to figure out the, the parts per million per mile. And what I'll do, let's start with this uh, iron right here at 18 parts per million. And that was on uh, the petroleum-based oil at 7,717 miles. So what I'll do is take that 18 parts per million you get a calculator and then divide that by the miles driven so it'd be 7717 and you come up with uh, 0 0.02 point zero zero two three parts per million per mile so point zero zero two three parts per million per mile driven okay so let's take that 51 and see where we're at there let's take that same thing with the AMS oil and we've got 51 parts per million, and divide that by the 18,481, and we got 0.0027. So very, very close as far as wear on the iron. They flagged it because what they do, they have what they call level limits. So with the level limits, um, it doesn't matter how many miles you've driven, once it reaches a certain level of parts per million of iron, they're going to flag it. And they're not taking into consideration that we've run at 18,000 miles. So uh, we break it down on a parts per, per uh, million per mile, and that's how you do that. It kind of tells you how the wear is. Um, if we see a huge jump uh, in wear from one to the next, and you see the next one here is 52, the next one down is 39. And this one here, it was 39 parts per million. We had 17,000 miles on it. Okay, and uh, again, we're looking at two times the run time. And uh, we're, we're looking really pretty good with everything. Um, they did flag boron, and up here in the, in the uh, comments, they say boron levels are naturally declining with use, so it's not a cause for concern, but they did flag it. But uh, again, this last sample here, 39 parts per million iron, one part per million chrome, zero nickel, two parts per million on the aluminum, and two on the copper, two on the lead, one on the tin. So, I mean, it's looking really good for the amount of miles we're driving, and that's with the uh, the PPE full flow filter and the AMSOIL bypass filter. So, I'm really happy with how this is performing. And again, the TBN here at around um, uh, anywhere from 16 to 18,000 and a half miles, we're, we're there at about four, you know, three to three to four range. So, I mean, if we wanted to, we could probably push this out to 20,000 mile run, run times without any issue whatsoever. Um, but that's just kind of where it falls at when it comes for the oil change. So, just kind of wanted to show you the results of, uh, of how that's performing uh, on that standalone bypass with the AMS oil and the PPE filters. So.
There you go.